Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things, continuing in part 3 in the unit circle working backwards. And where we started on this is first drawing uh, an inscribed rectangle inside of a unit circle, or really any circle, but inside a unit circle. Um, next, we looked at a line of symmetry in the first quadrant, which lets us know that there is a relationship between uh, two points in that first quadrant from 0 to 90 degrees so that um, basically the x and the y values flip as you look at some point that reflects about that 45 degree line. Again in keeping with this theme of what tools we're using I'm going to point out that we are using Camtasia Smooth, Smooth Draw with Camtasia though Cam Studio is freely available. I'm going to as usual go ahead I'm making a new layer here I'll try to do a better job with the use of the layers here in a second and now I'm going to import a layer image because this program does not have a great circle drawer or line drawer it is kind of one of the drags of this program but it is free and it is great I've brought that in uh, I've got to move it around a little bit and then I got to kind of I've got now that circle and I'm good to go because it's on another layer. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add a new layer. And now I'm on something called layer 2, which lets, lets me turn on and off layer 1. Later on, you can see I turn off the background layer, turn off there. I can go to transparent. So this great program, and, and I'll go through that in another video, the tools that it has. Once again, the downside is, in fact, it does not have a um, Great circle drawer or line drawer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, I'm going to, again, we're going to be dealing in now the first quadrant again. So I'm going to go back to my eraser and I'm going to erase out everything, but except I've got to go now once you get layers in there, you have to make sure you're on the right layer. I'm going to make my brush big. I'm going to erase out everything but the first quadrant. Remember in a second as I talk about and write these over and over again until they become so ingrained and let me talk about what the math teachers are probably already yelling about is we want to set up our coordinate system right away a right hand coordinate system you can see what that means later or probably the first time you're dealing with a reverse thread you better figure that out or you're going to strip it out in the car or whatever so what I'm going to do is now go to my layer 2 I'm on a different layer now I'm going to bring my pen to black and I'm going to go ahead and Go ahead and show you that this is going to be my 0, 0. It's going to be a right hand coordinate system which says this is plus x and this is plus y. Okay. Remember the unit circle is what we're dealing with here. The unit circle has a radius equal to 1 which means the diameter is equal to 2. The area of the unit circle is pi units and the angle interior or included angle equals 2 pi. So later on you're going to see over and over again that any circle is in fact the unit circle made bigger or smaller. So getting this drilled in uh, as early as possible uh, through discovery and any other set of means is a great idea. Now what we're going to look at is how it is classically taught to learn the values of effectively what is we're going to talk about this being 15 degrees right and what you're going to see over time is classically they don't teach 15 degrees. So I'm going to show you the classic uh, the way to get students to know this probably the first time and, and never forget it. We'll go backwards to get to the point with fourth graders about what a square root is. But I'm going to go ahead now and erase out using the erase tool. I'm going to erase out the 15 degrees. And I'm going to take you back to my classroom a few years back when a student asked, why don't they show you 15 degrees? And you're going to see later, if you go out and look on the internet on the unit circle or the way we all learned it, very often they never show you 15 degrees. And that question really dug into the matter. And I figured out later it's because it isn't convenient. That's my personal theory. So what you see on here is basically at this point, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. I'm just going to write it on the side here. I go back to here. So this angle here is 30 degrees. This angle here is 45 degrees and this angle here is in fact 60 degrees. Now of course you really want to very quickly let students know and you'll see later why you probably want to include the 15 degrees to 30 degrees 
is pi over 6, and 45 degrees is pi over 4, and 60 degrees is pi over 3, and of course 90 degrees equals pi over 2, and of course 0 degrees equals 0. Later on you're going to see one more reason to learn 15 degrees, and so I'm going to see if I can go back to here and erase out so we don't see that. So I'm teaching here what is classically taught in full knowledge that there's a problem with the, that, and that is you've got a whole set of values here from 0 to 30 and from 60 to 90 that you don't know the value of. And so we'll come back to that. All right, so here's how this is probably best taught and not always taught this way. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to green. That is basically taking this line of radius 1 and dividing it up. Trying to switch to green. Dividing and dividing it up in half. And dividing it up in half this way. And if you do that, even without the lines drawn, you immediately have what is the 60 degree line, what is the 40, 30 degree line, and if you notice there where they come together is that 45 degree line. And at this point in time, you're then prepared to teach students basically most of what's going on in this first quadrant with the full knowledge that later on you want them to forget what happens from 45 to 90 so that they can learn to use the concept of reflection inside of here. Once again, learning redundant systems, if you would, um, is what I as an engineer have it had ingrained in me in a long, for a long time, but as a parent as well, um, as I'm looking at teaching my daughter to drive the car, knowing when to look twice and when to think and look three times. Um, and my daughter's a great driver. All right, so here's how we can go about doing that, teaching students. First off, having them draw these lines first is important, and you'll see later why. It's setting up something that's redundant to keep them from transcribing numbers and, or it's screwing up that way. So what you're going to do is you're going to know, we've got green, 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 and we're going to go here and here, all right? I'm going to try to change the black, and we remember that the sign is either the Y value over 1 because the radius is 1 and the cosine is the x value. So you probably want to let you know that x comma y is the same as cosine and sine. So with young kids we don't talk about that. We probably just talk about these. The x and the y value and you now do this. You open the parentheses. I'm sorry. First thing you do is you point out that on the Cartesian coordinate system that this is 1 and 0, and this is 0 and 1. And you double check it, and you're going to see later why that's there. These two values are switched, aren't they? So students can see that the x is 0, and the y is 1, and the y x is zero, 1, and the y is 0 here. You now then teach them, this is, call it a trick, call it a rote, whatever you do here three sets of parentheses with commas in between for the coordinates here and there. Now you may or may not have done this, but I would suggest it if you live in around the 45 degree, um, degree of latitude, is going out and showing students where the, where the North Star is in the middle of the day or the middle of the night and train into them that in fact the tangent of 45 degrees equals 1 and you're going to see later setting up a redundant system and of course learning depending the students are teaching that the tangent definition is probably better than anything else learned is sine over cosine. Once again you're not talking about that but you are talking about the tangent here we'll talk about later why how that ties into the tangent is the slope y equals mx plus b can also y be written y equals the tangent of the angle x plus b. Again, not talking about that. So you've drafted the first or drawn the first quadrant in the unit circle. You have divided it up in half and half, and then you do this. Da 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 Obviously, if you're in Wisconsin, you do that. And then you do this. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 2, the square root of 3. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 2 and the square root of 3. 
and now you have the values. I'm going to go ahead and pause, which I never do, to check the phone. Okay, I paused and now I'm back and it was a telemarketer. We're in Wisconsin. There's going to be a lot of phone calls for the next month. Um, so what you've done, if you remember, you drafted up the half. You've kind of cut this in half and in half. That got you in the end the 60 degree line and the 30 degree line and the 45 degree line passed through that point there. And so you then determine the points on the circle, which are 60, 45, and 30, or if you would, going up, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. Later on, you're going to see it's a great way to teach fractions. We're back, and we're going to hit pause again. Okay, second phone call. We'll end it there. Remember, in fact, that by drafting the unit circle, the unit circle has a radius of 1, a diameter of 2. Its area, the whole thing is pi which means that this little slice here is pi over 4. But in fact, the angle here is pi over 4. So that starts to introduce students to some of this kind of numerical patterns that exist within the unit circle. Very quickly getting students to know that the tangent of 45 is 1 and the tangent later on is sine over cosine, which really, that gets you a check to this here. That gets you the check to this. So this, you know it's 45 and it's something divided by itself is 1. So there's a check there. You have the check here when you do after you do the pattern of over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2, of 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. You have a check here in that the x is a half, and you have a check here in that the y is a half. And the square root of 3 over time, you start to recognize and see that in enough problems. And what that leaves finally is this gaping hole of essentially 15 and 75 degrees. And it's the next and the last in this video series of the unit circle working backwards where we'll investigate, I would say, one of the most gaping holes I ever saw in a formed curriculum is avoidance of one of the most fundamental angle turns on the planet, which is the turn of the earth in one hour, which is pi over 12. And so we'll come back to that in the next series. Thanks for listening. And be sure to subscribe to, I don't know, uh, the New Boston, because I don't really have subscribers. Thanks for listening.